Kenny W Dynamite family. How's every single one of you today? It's time to talk about every single thing that happened on the show. So we have the official review for you guys. The show that like was the uh, aftermath of what happened at AEW Revolution. So a lot of like continuations of new storylines and the debut of somebody that everybody thought that like it was finally going to debut. So a lot of stuff. We had like you said, Jean Paul as Swerve. So that was really good also. Like a, a three title matches. Pretty good Dynamite and Paul. And we're getting excited because actually the show is getting a little better. And you know, we don't have a lot to complain this time. You know what, if you watch an episode, if every single Dynamite was like this, where, okay, you have a segment or two, something, hey, it had some, the show had something for everybody, but for the most part, it kept it legit, it kept it serious, it kept it good. If this was Dynamite every single week moving forward, or better, they're the number one company. Easy. Yeah. They have all the, Jeff Hardy, I got, even though I knew he was coming, big surprise, everybody knew he was coming. When he came out and him and it, it was, it still felt, it wasn't WrestleMania a couple years ago, but it still felt legit. It still yes. felt big and everything on this show that's main event, they present main event and, you know, William Regal as well. We're going to talk about that. But, you know. Absolutely. So thank you so very much family for being with us. You no, know, thank you for the love and support for like AEW Revolution. You know, the official review. We talk about every single match outcomes. Why was it good? Why was it wrong? So, you know, please keep doing that. Keep like also subscribing. Leave a comment. Hey, let us know what you guys want us to cover. Everything right there will be in the annotation of the video. So, Paul, like you said, let's start from the beginning of this show because Chris Jericho, I don't know if he needed a shower. I don't know if he just needed a little more time with his hair. He came out a little like undone with the hair, but like, I mean, he's. Hey, it looked like the lion. It looked like the lion. Yes, yeah, it's exactly. Like, and, and, you know, he's talking about how and why he didn't shake uh, Eddie Kingston's hand. So, like, that was like the big thing after the match with Eddie Kingston wins. So, like, Jericho says, you know what? I was a bit, I was bullshit. You know, I should have never done that. He and my respect, all of that. Eddie Kingston comes out. He just got a great promo. You know, like, in the what chance started, like, just like. You know, like, he, they were starting to chant one, and he says, well, Stone Cold is not here, so, you know, shut up. Uh, take this seriously. So that was pretty good. And he just says that, like, he had a lot of fear, but he overcame that, and he was able to win this match for the people that he's, he's been inspiring. So good stuff over there, Paul. So far, how are you liking this? I mean, this is great, and the whole time I'm watching this, I'm thinking, okay, you know, he says to Jericho, he ends it with, this isn't an Eddie Kingston problem that you didn't shake my hand, because I'm fine. I won the match for my fans, for myself. I'm good. I don't need to shake your hand. You needed to shake my hand and you didn't. That's something you need to figure out. You need to fill that hole in your chest. So Jericho's like, let's do it. And they shake hands. And I'm thinking, okay, there's no way Tony Khan is going to end a segment with two baby faces shaking hands and segment go to segment two. There's no way. He always has to have an angle. And then we see 2.0 come out. I'm like, okay, I guess they're going to beat 2.0 up. And, uh, but, can, but, to, right? but, to answer, but to answer your question, I liked it. But I thought I don't like Jericho being a babyface. I was yes. I was I was waiting for him to turn. Uh, but I thought it was just going to be him, or he was going to say, you know what, screw. You. And maybe he shakes his hand, but you know he gives him a look or something. Jericho walks away, or there's some kind of words or some kind of friction. But no, you know they stood in there when 2.0 came in and they jumped him and they bumped Jericho once, and Jericho like sells the neck like he got shot in the head, and then they just triple team Kingston. And at that point, I was really thinking. Why is Jericho selling the neck so much? And then it makes sense because Santana and Ortiz make the save. They eventually hand Jericho to bat. Jericho, uh-uh. You know, we're going to talk about Stone Cold. Uh-uh. You know, like he used to <laughs> yes. do. Jericho turns. Boom. He starts whacking, you know, uh, Santana, Ortiz, Kingston. Hager comes out. Uh, duh, what do I do? He's I don't like, know. What do with, I do? What do I he's do? He's like, you joined with yes. me, you big dummy. And he's like, yeah, you're right. So then we see, you know, the new inner circle. But, you know, they beat them down. But we find out. They're not this the inner little, like, I don't know if you thought like uh, can you can you at least like uh, plan the power bomb a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that was that was a dangerous spot. I mean, either Hager's not as strong as he thinks he is, or he was already well, gassed. Is a little heavy. Or he's gassed, or yeah, or Kingston just didn't go up for it, or you know, and he is a big man. You know, we made a joke. I mean, that, about the belly. You know, in Revolution, go watch the review. We talked about the belly. Yes, maybe, well, yeah, maybe we did. he couldn't. You know, maybe he couldn't. Uh, you know, pick himself up. It was hard. It was dangerous. But they power bombed him through the table. We hope Kingston's okay. We love him. He and like you it. said, like they miss a lot of the table because, like, uh, actually, like a little bit of the back and the neck. Was well, the Jr. One, even like, said he's like that was pretty much his head, neck, and shoulders. Yes, that's what it none was. Of his, exactly. None of his back <laughs> really did it. And that, and you, if, if you watch the highlights, I'm sure it's on YouTube. That table exploded. Yes. So you know he yes, really so got like, you know, be a little careful. With, no, tomorrow. Yeah. So, but, um, so the one thing, 
The one but, you know, we have a new group, like you said. Yeah, the Jericho Appreciation Society. And I'm like, what is that? J-A-S. The JAS. The, I'm like, it, it doesn't even spell anything. It, so to me, it's a bad name. But hey, it's probably a Jericho creation. But I'm not going to crap on him too much because he's going back to being heel, which what he's good at. Exactly. And, I mean, the one thing is, if you... Garcia, I like. I have no problem with him. And if you can somehow present, you know, 2.0, a little more legit if this elevates them, you know, and it gets them over. And Jericho, he's got himself in shape. So, you know, we got to see where this goes. The only thing I really have to criticize this is just the name. I don't care about the name. The name is just weird. But oh, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Is. It's hard for, like, you know, like, I guess to come up with, like, better names. But I will see how it goes. And in, in that regard, like you said, I, I like that like, he's using other guys to elevate him. He did the same yes. thing for Santana Ortiz, for Sammy Guevara. Hager, not much because, you know, Hager was kind of like a name. No, I think, I think Hager, I think he's a part-time, yeah, you know, AEW guy for me. He hit, he has the he hit his on. plateau. Would would you agree with that? Like he's not gonna get any better. He's not gonna get any more over. He's at no, where yeah. he's at, and that's and like I said. Is. Like I said to you, like for me, he's a part time wrestler. Yep. He's more like an MMA guy. You know, he's Bellator. He he does what he thrives. This is just you know why. Hey, I can still do the wrestling thing. That's fine. So like you said, we have a new society here, like the new inner circle on Chris Jericho mm -hmm. and two point uh, two point oh Garcia and Hager. But now let's go with like. AEW World Championship match. This was just put to me because they needed to continue it. What happened with Adam Hammond Page and Adam Cole at Revolution? And Dante Martin receives an opportunity. Did we think he was going to win? And no, also to, to make to make note, we're going to talk. All three, you know, men's titles were defended. Yes. So you know, it, it was really a loaded show here. It was. You know, it and, was. You know, that's also, how you do at little. Yeah. And, that's how you do the show. Before, because and before this, you know, they showed a backstage little talk with CM Punk and everything. Like, you don't want to call out the old CM Punk. You see what happens. Highlights from the dog collar match. So, again, you know, continuing that momentum with CM Punk. And then we get this match. And this match was kind of just thrown together. I thought, really, what was this? And then after the match, the promo we hear, you kind of understand why. But, I mean, Dante Martin and Hangman Adam Page, again, you know, Hangman always says he's a fighting champion, so I thought, okay, this is going to be good. You knew the title was no way going to change hands, but they put on a good match. This was, you know, anything. Sometimes you see the champion, he, he has this match. Like you always say, like, oh, Ric Flair, Bobby Eaton, and, you know, Ric Flair, Ricky Morton, guys that you knew weren't going to beat Ric Flair, but he gave him a good match on TV anyway. And, you know, that's what this was. And, you know, I love the ending sequence on the outside. They're dodging everything, this and that. Hangman eventually gets him in the ring, sets him up with a buckshot, hits it. Like JR says, nobody kicks out, pins him. And then before he walks away, he calls him in the ring. He's like, listen, you and I kind of like similar things, got thrown into the singles division. And it's like you had to sink or swim and you swam and look where you got. You got here to the AEW championship. You didn't get it now. You're going back to the tag division, but you might be back one day. So you go, okay, you know, they're just really trying to get this kid over and he is good and the fans do like him. But then Adam Cole interrupts. He's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. You're bullshit. I don't want to hear it no more. You're like a fluke win. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. a fluke win. He's like, you know, anybody can beat, you know, anybody once. You can't do it again. And then, of course, Hangman Adam Page, babyface. Oh, let's do it right now. And it's like, dude, don't be bullshit. Don't do it right now. And he's like, Adam Cole even says that. He's like, no, we're going to do it next week. I think they're in Texas next week. Yeah, nah, yeah, they're going to be in Texas, but it's just going to be a, a six-man tag. Yeah, like, yeah, and he's oh. like, but it's going to be a six-man tag. He's like, you know, I'm going to pick two guys who you know very well. And it was all, it was hinted it was the Young Bucks. And, yes, they you know, were young. And he's like, you, know, he's like, you can pick, you. he's like, you can pick anybody that you want, and, you know, we're going to have this match. So, you know, and he does the Adam Cole, Bebe, and, you know, he poses there. And, and then, you know, they just have the stare down. And this, I mean, you knew there was going to be a continuation. Because Adam Cole's too good, but I mean, what what did you think of this? You did you think? Because I, I mean, now the role will like reverse. I, said, I need to go for think. another one. Uh, I'm thinking yeah. that Adam Cole will be the one dethroning Page, but like I said, they need more build for this. And I like it. I mean, Cole like like at the end was a little better because he says I'm not gonna rest. Still, like the referee says, I'm the new AEW World Heavyweight yeah. Champion, Adam Cole, baby. So okay, you see that like there's a lot of obsession. There's a lot of a. Uh, you know, will to become the new champion, so that's fine. And then we got a little promo right up. You know, this is a little later in the show, but we're just gonna address it right now. And this is like Red Dragon and the Young Bucks, and the Young Bucks is like, dude, we're not gonna do anything without a hand on page. Like we told you, like we don't want any problems. We want to stay away. And the like, guys is like, you guys weren't one the one, they were the ones that I was gonna pick. It was Red Dragon. So you see, like, you know, Young Bucks and like Adam Cole, and, like they're having a little bit yes, of friction right there. 
So maybe yeah. at some point Kenny Omega will be back. They say that he's yeah. I mean, to... or or you know Jay White. You know we can't forget or about Jay him. White, yeah. Good played. Yes. I mean anybody. You know there's yes. lots of people that could step in there and fill that role. And then also I don't know if you had the picture, but Hangman Adam Page. You know kind of on the opposite side. He was talked to. You know and the Dark Order. You know they were like, oh, you know who are you gonna pick? Well, first he apologized for the match, which I mean, it's stupid. Hangman apologizing to these clowns makes him he, all the credibility. You know, we gave him for the Adam Cole match and everything. None. <laughs> Done. You know, don't None. apologize to these None. losers. But you know, he they were like, "Oh, who are you gonna pick?" And he's like, "Oh, well, I actually saw you know Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus in the hallway, and they said they want another shot at the Young Bucks. So you know, I didn't want to say no. So yeah, I picked them. And then they're like, Duh. "You see, yeah, I didn't mean, need to just he needs also. to leave." They need to just cause the split and leave because they are like a tumor on him and just cut it off and then let Bray Wyatt come in. He can pick up that tumor and he can run with it. Because and then he can be a little bit, yeah. I, I, because I, I, they, I, if, they're gonna, if they have to give it to somebody, I don't know, give it to him because Bray Wyatt does. I, well, I shouldn't call it Bray Wyatt. Wyndham Rotunda, he did the goofy shit as Bray Wyatt, you know, Firefly Funhouse, so he can be right with those guys. No, it's, it's true. It's true. And like you said, like, because unfortunately what happened with Brody Lee, like, the group is, has been up in the air. They don't have, yeah. a, like, a path. They don't have a horizon. They don't have anything going for them. It's like, they it's literally there. like the oddities hanging out with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it makes no sense. Yes, I, I, you're right. So, like, we'll see what happens. But, I mean, we, we address it both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. But there's still Adam Cole is in the title picture. But let's go with, like, what happened. What we said, you know, one of the greatest matches of Revolution. And that was, like, John Moxley against Brian Danielson. And now they finally attacked him. We said, hey, before I tag, we need to bleed together. We got what happened. And also, we saw William Regal by their side. So, they uh, they just, like, pretty much took care of, like, an enhancement, like, tag. It was pretty quick. You know, Moxley did a little bit of work. Then Daniel Bryan did most of it. And there you go. And not even, you know, LaBelle Love. Yeah, and that J.D. Him. Drake, we saw we saw him before, but now he's with his Ring of Honor tag team partner, or they yeah. at least wrestled in Ring of Honor. So, I mean, that's kind of cool. They did that for them, and they mentioned Ring of Honor, you know, because obviously they purchased that. We covered that episode. You know, go back in the archives, check yes. it out. But, no, I mean, the main thing, and, you know, you take us through it, because I'll be like Regal. I'll talk forever about this promo. So you well, take no, yeah, us well, through really, 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 it. Really, 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 with Tony yeah. Giovanni, he says for 29 years we'll be doing this, and uh, you know, I thought we would never do this again, but there you go, life has, has like this type of turns, and then he just talks about how much, like a 21 year relationship he said with Daniel Bryan, or Bryan Danielson, and they said that like, he is the perfect wrestler, he's what I was supposed to be, or what would I wish to be, but he doesn't have the same problems that I have, but he said that like he taught him as much as he could, and then he comes to Moxley, because remember, on, on the early days of NXT, they had a great rivalry, yeah. John Moxley and also like William Regal and also in the indie scene. So they said that like this is the one of the perfect tag team combinations. Why? Because you have the wrestler in Brian and the guy that will make it to the next level, being psychotic, violent, and all of that in Moxley. So he just puts everybody on notice. And he says that like whoever like you know steps in will be a step on. So like good promo and I mean, this is good. We'll see what they can do with Regal later on. Maybe he can become an authority figure or like you said, a wrestler. So I'm not opposed to this idea. And uh, this is good because at least you're combining two big names and they put him just on the tag. Because yeah, I don't know if they need to be in the title picture yet. So I'm not against it uh, until this point. No, and I think they're really just going to stretch and destroy every single team, whether it's an indie team or a team that has, you know, uh, a record here on AEW. But they're just going to beat every team. And this promo by Regal was so great. I loved in the beginning, it was like he was his oldest self. He's like, oh, you know, he called Tony Schiavone sweetheart. And he's like, oh, you know, he even like plays them Regal mind games. And it's so good. And, you know, he, he said he's 53. And he's like, oh, you know, in, in 10 years from now, my wife will be pushing me in the wheelchair. I'll fucking toast drizzling out my mouth because I'm like, you know, done. And it's like, you know, obviously he's over exaggerating or, you know, at least we hope so. But, you know... I mean, Sting is what, 61, 62? Regal, 62. He, he's nine years younger. I mean, I'm not saying not? I in there and jump through a table, but hey, if you want to stretch a guy and play safe, you don't have to leave your feet. Maybe take a bump, but don't be jumping off no turnbuckle or nothing. I mean, you know, play it safe. And I mean, I'd love to see him have another match, but the, the main thing I got out of this and I loved is like if William Regal was split down the middle and he had a good half and a bad half, it would be these two. Yeah. Moxley is the troubled past, the drinker, the drugs, the brawler, you know, who, I mean, obviously he straightened himself out now, which is good, but he has that dark past like Regal, 
and yes. Danielson and our self-destructive past, and Danielson's the perfect wrestler. So it's like the two of them together is what William Regal is. the perfect combo, like I mentioned. So like, good, good, good promo. And again, excited because every single thing that happened in Revolution had a continuation. And that's how you get the hook. That's how everybody yes. excited to see what's going to happen next week. Well, you know, probably the only like thing that we can actually yeah. This was this was the stinker. This was exactly the stinker. The stinker. You know, Pack that is a great wrestler, but unfortunately he's not been able to get over. I don't know unless you like professional wrestling that match, or you don't even care about storytelling. Pack will be like your cup of tea, but like Willa Yuta, pretty quick. You know, like the brutalizer and uh, submission does the end of it. That's the one thing that like I feel that like AEW has really dropped the ball on Pack because they have not been able to give him any main event well, opportunity. He made so, no I don't know. sense. It made no sense for I mean the match I'm not gonna talk about it because I don't care. I'm just gonna exactly. comment on Pack. The only thing is the guy has like this black cloud over him and I don't know what it is. But I mean I could I feel if you didn't put him with the Lucha Brothers, which made zero sense. You call him Death Triangle, but then Pac can't wrestle because of visas, and then it's you know it's. But he shouldn't have been with a tag team to begin with. He yes. should be. He could have been going after Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship. There's yes. no reason why he wasn't. He could have been wrestling Miro. He could have been wrestling Brody Lee or whoever Cody. It didn't matter. He could have. He had no reason to be in the tag division and be. He's always involved in other people's feuds and never his own singles feud. The last time yes. he felt legit. And then we're going to move on. But the last time he felt legit was when he had the match against Kenny Omega. Yeah, that was the last. And that was the early beginning, like the yes. beginning of AEW. So after that, Pac, unfortunately, completely like in the middle. I think he was everything. the first person to beat Kenny Omega. Or was that Mox? Yes, he was. He was. Okay. He was. Like yeah. you said, like he was the perfect. And then and that's when like, Kenny Omega needed like just the rebound. But like all good. Yeah. But then Pac actually completely fell down. So let's talk about like FTR because they're actually taking in the bookings. It seems like their contract is up with AEW, maybe like finishing some more dates. But like they fired Tolly Blanchard, they're not the manager anymore. So the pinnacle is absolutely raised from the face of the air because what we're trying to talk about with World War. And this, you know, it seems like that they're not going to renew their contract and it's fine. Or maybe they're going to go to Ring of Honor and that will be better for them. We'll see. But like here in AEW, they have not been as successful yeah. as they could. And, and, and the promo is, is really telling because it's like it is there's almost like work shoot aspects in it because you know dax was just talking about oh you know i i love wrestling and because they asked how are you going to rebound from the loss it's like oh well i still love wrestling but you know my family and i gotta explain to them you know blah 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 all this stuff and then holy's like i don't give a fuck about your family when i was your manager it was to win gold not win for your family he's like that's bullshit He's like, I have a family too, but I don't talk about them all the time. And then Cash stepped in and is like, whoa, you know, we do care about that. And you're not our family, so you're fired. And and this is weird. I don't know what the whole, I mean, hopefully that's not the new gimmick is, oh, family, family, because that's kind of weird. I yeah. still hope they're badass FTR, but I mean, we, we got to see where they go from here, whether it's in AEW or not. Oh, well, like you said, maybe Ring of Honor, they could be, maybe Impact, they could, like, you know, there has their, their choices, maybe New Japan, we'll see, but, like, again, they're taking in the booking, so there you go. Um, maybe the match with the Briscoes will be something when GCW, that will be also really good. So let's talk about now, they're going, going to have a meeting, address the situation with Matt Hardy's group and Andrade's, and this was just to set up for Jeff Hardy. We knew this because Matt Hardy's like, oh, yeah, like, my boys are always going to stay with me, and Andrade, in, you know, in his way of talking English and everything, he says that, like, you always got to wash your back. It's not watch. I guess you gotta wash your back. You gotta shower. Well, he did call him stinky like earlier. Out. Remember, he called him stinky. Yeah. So, so maybe he does have to wash his back. But yeah, then yeah, private party still. turns on him. They all beat him up, and the crowd is chanting, "Jeff, Jeff, Jeff." So like I said, everybody knows it. And see, this is where they got him because it's like you know they they teased them, they blue balled him, and oh, here comes Sting and Darby Allen. Because remember, you know they they yeah they have the magic revolution, they have the feud, yes. And that you know it's like oh you know now that Matt Hardy's babyface by association since his team turned on him, you know now you know the baby faces are coming out to help him, but the numbers game is still there. No, Jeff Hardy's music hits, and people said oh don't ex you know don't be surprised if they play the Hardy's music because WWE doesn't own it. Yes, That's and uh, Tony Khan it. actually uh, fought for it. Yes, called Lotus. Yes, That's so, the name of the song. And yeah, yeah so it's, it's not a W. It's probably paid for it. He made it. song, so you know he can yeah. easily get it. So he got it. They came in there. Obviously, you know, who Matt Hardy hits. You know what the twist of fate. The twist of fate and the swanton bomb. Swanton. Every I haven't seen Jeff done a swanton in forever, because obviously he's not been on TV because WWE's bullshit. Mm -hmm. But you know when he did it. I, he turns at the last second. I always think he's gonna break his neck. Oh yeah, 
You know, when yeah. he jumps and then it's like whoop, and then he turns. I'm like, I don't know how he does it, but his swanton's are. Unfortunately, uh, you know, um, fortunately, I should say, you know, like he's been doing that forever. Yeah, so they're so he, legit. You know, they, he that's can how do that in his own sleep, and he'll be fine. Yeah. We're not, you know, we're not gonna have any issues. And the crowd legit pop when they hit when that and that music first, like well, like, like you said, like I mean, that's the good thing from like Tony Khan that like he knew that like the song didn't belong to the WWE. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna get it. The only song that they were not able to really get it was like for uh, Brian Danielson at the final countdown because they were asking like so much money just and also like there was like the, the amount of times they could actually play it it was very restricted so many 30 times in a year so i was like you know what whatever oh yeah no he's on tv almost every week but so exactly only so now at least with this, this and then we really can good. move on it's just um it was smart that this was at nine o'clock so if yes. people you know their, their show's done at nine o'clock you're flipping through the channels you flip here at nine o'clock you see jeff hardy oh yeah exactly so like that was really cool and maybe we're going to see a match between this but like you said Matt Hardy is like baby face right now and the Hardy boys are back together which is good they need we needed that you know Jeff like and, was and, never and, like like you said he was never good in WWE because they don't know how to give him an opportunity so now I feel that like they're going to do some justice here for the Hardy boys and look at every single segment we've seen even the Young Buck segment wasn't awful and you know the Dark Order is whatever but besides you know the, the best friends and everything Look at every single segment, how much star power it has. Star power, yeah. Yeah, it That's is. I mean, and WWE, I mean, they're still the number one company by just because they've been there for how long, but it, they, they're not really competing right now. Oh, no, yeah, exactly. So uh, this is really good, like you said. And let's talk about now Isaiah Swerve Scott. He's going to fight, uh, you know, Tony Nese on Rampage. So this is good. And, uh, and I like how, like, Tony Giovanni, like, he goes, Tony, whose house it is? It's, 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 it's Swerve's house. So, like, you know, you see a little bit of, like, uh, like a cocky heel, like you mentioned in the uh, AEW Revolution. So maybe he's going to be portraying this character. I say, as far as Scott is like, or Strickland, he's a great wrestler. So there, I, was, I see good, good stuff for him, maybe good feuds. It's all about how you book the guy. But this is going to be interesting at least to see. Yeah. And I mean, Tony Nese, he's doing the same thing in AEW he's going to be doing, you know, in, that he did in WWE. He's going to be putting some guy over. And, you know, that's what Swerve said as well. So we got to see where this match is. Rampage. You know, they've been putting on some all right shows. I still think the time slot kills them, but I, I easily see Swerve getting it. It's two, it's two things that like, kills him, Paul. It's like the thing that like is like, it's not live. Yeah, uh, although the last week's episode was live, but like, you know, it's not live. And like you said, it's like the time. It's like 10 o'clock is way too late for a wrestling show. I yeah. absolutely agree with you. If it will be 8 o'clock, maybe it will be a little bit more watchable. They should, I mean, hey, if they, if they really load the show with legit stuff, they do it at nine o'clock. I think they could compete with SmackDown. It, it will be a little bit, yeah. You could compete with SmackDown. Oh, so SmackDown is better. There's no way that that's no. The only happen. thing that's gonna save SmackDown is Roman. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, there you go. So let's talk about Warlock. He got a good promo. He mentioned like his upbringing. He mentioned like how like he became a wrestling fan. He, his mother like uh, did his best for like to provide for him and for his sisters. And he says that like he had to sign this contract with MJF just because he needed like a break. He wanted to like belong to like a major company. He says, oh, I was like inside of a cage and then I got myself out and then I got into myself into another cage. You see Warlock like ready and he finally cuts the ties with MJF. He says that like he wants to win the TNT Championship and finally get another contract. So good promo by him. A lot of intensity. The guy can actually talk. I want to. I, I was just gonna tell you this. They'll right. show this clip to Vince McMahon, and they'll be like, "Imagine this versus Braun Breaker." They'll be like, "Empty the fucking e empty the bank." Oh yeah. Empty the bank. They'll be like, "When his contract's up, whatever he, whatever Tony Khan offers him, just keep throwing zeros at the end of it." Oh, they know. They know. Bro. Because oh, they, I, now, that, now that this guy cut this promo. I'm like, okay, we already know he's a beast in the ring. He has the presence, everything, and then he can cut a promo. I'm like, yes. oh my! I'm like, they, they're gonna, they, they'll do anything to get this guy. Warlow, ba great babyface promo here. You give him a backstory, you give him a reason. The crowd's now behind him. They were already behind him. How many weeks ago in Cleveland when they wanted him to turn and he didn't? Ever since then, man, that momentum has been going, and this is great. Like you said, this is absolutely fantastic, and I mean, like, WWE was already uh, well, checking, you know, hey, when is the contract, and like seeing, like, measuring, you know, just, like, and they already it, had, they like, already you know, had him how many years ago, and they said, nah, kid. Yeah, you know, but like, now, like you said, like this is a big loss for them because, like, you, I was, I was pleasant, I was like so surprised that he's able to cut that type of promo, like fluently, yeah. like the, you know, the tone was good and everything. The guy is, is gonna be the, is this is gonna be his year. This is the year of world love. You know, once he becomes champion, he just needs a catchphrase. He just needs that little bit. 
you know, like so he can actually read everybody in the crowd. But this was really good. And we're gonna see like MJF. I think he's gonna screw him out of the TNT Championship. Keith Lee, and you know, unfortunately with him, he's gonna start from the bottom. Gotta face his deuce ball. He's limitless, but he gotta start with, of course, this guy, you know, from the factory, you know, and the QT Marshall. So he says, hey, we have the same enemy, Team Taz. You think we can help each other out? Ah, oh, no, I have a big bag. It's all good. So you see the lighter like, actually gonna go at it, and this is gonna be added into Rampage. Also. Yeah, this is th this is such shit. I mean, he needs to beat him in like thirty seconds. Look, he's not even in gear. He, look, uh, he, couldn't he have been yeah. fired with? Cody it's just bad. It's as, not a good thing for Keith. Couldn't he have been fired with Cody as like a group package, like a deal? Like no, Cody. <laughs> You know, you have to take QT with you as well. Like, he can't yeah, stay here. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, this guy's a clown. Yeah. I agree. So that wasn't that, that good. But, like, you know, let's talk about a little bit of like membership match, like you said. It was the tag titles. It was, like, Jura not the Jurassic Express anymore. It's Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus against the Acclaim. Pretty decent match, but, you know, again, you know, just you just loaded the show because you want people to continue watching it. The Acclaim is a pretty decent yeah. tag team. I mean, they have the rapper. You know, both of them are really good wrestlers. But in the end, you know, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, they're able to retain those titles. Powerbomb Christian is still in the picture. I mean, as the manager, like, as the mentor. There you go addition with Adam Hanman Page, so they're actually trying to like make these guys look a little more credible as tag champions, which is fine. I mean, I don't have any bad things to say about this. Yeah, no, and, and they're not, you don't see Luchasaurus cutting the goofy promos no more. He kind of keeps quiet. You know, maybe, you know, that's the one thing, Tony Khan, he keeps his ear to the ground. He's not like Vince McMahon who self-isolates and doesn't listen to what anybody says. Maybe Tony Khan eventually that gets through and he goes, hey, a bunch of the fans say, let's do this. So let's do it. Let's see if it works. And I think it's starting to work. I'm not saying they're over like the moon. The Hardys are definitely more over than they are. Red Dragon, I would say, maybe is. You know, there's a couple teams. But, I mean, they, they're still the tag champs. And at least they're acting more serious. Oh, yeah, exactly. So that's that's for me. If they do that, they're all right. They have my money on it. So that was really good. Who's next for Jed Carhill, Paul? We don't know yet. There's going to be like an open challenge for us, but it's going to be Rampage also. I just said it's going to be 30 and 0. And we'll see. Maybe like a new debut. Who knows? Maybe, like I said, Mia Yim. There's a lot of people that are free agents right now. So we'll see maybe somebody that can be at least a potential opponent for her. Because Ruby Soho, again, it doesn't make any sense. And outside of her, you don't have anybody. So we'll see what happens on that. Yeah, and I mean, I don't really want to see Nyla Rose or anything like that either. So, I mean, somebody well, new would be legit, you know. But, but we gotta, we gotta wait and see. And now we know, like, she does it like from Mortal Kombat, the kiss of death, and everything. So, you know, that, yeah, that's what we see. Are, 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 are we gonna, are we gonna see more kisses of death? You know, you know we know, we gotta wait. Maybe to see. we'll see. But like, you know, Paul, like, that's the cool thing. For example, AEW, like now they have the big names, but they're building. You know names of their own for example now Wardlow is on the on the men's side and now Jade is on the women's side there you go yep. two people that absolutely we did not know and they're actually flourishing as a great like additions for the company so like we had like a this was like a number one contenders tournament for like to be before to go against Britt Baker for the Pretty good match. The only thing that I don't know why she was needed to like for Thunder Rosa to be legit the Hirsch, but I don't, I don't, I didn't care for it. I, I'm, I was thinking maybe she's gonna pull off the upset, maybe get a little bit win. I would have been happy. But in the end, Thunder Rosa gets the win, the, the Thunder Driver, and you know you see Red Bull. I don't understand what was that needed. Uh, Tony Giovanni comes out. He mentions that the next Dynamite is gonna be in Thunder Rosa's hometown. But for that and also celebrating the year of the Lights Out match that they had. She's been awarded another championship opportunity, like a rematch, and it's going to be inside, inside Steel Cage. What do you think, Paul? I'm excited about this, and it seems this, to me that the title is going to come to Thunder Rose. I, this is my last, like, chance no, on this feud, my because it's been going on so long, and now that you do it, you know, a, a little over a week, you know, pretty much like a week, two weeks later, that that is, like, if you don't do it now, it's done. Because, I mean, it's in her hometown, Okay, Britt had the new belt. She defended it, whatever. I mean, it's Thunder Rosa's time. You you have so many heels waiting to challenge somebody. And because there's no more baby faces left. Thunder Rosa has to win the belt, you know, and then you can do lots of stuff. You know, that yes. I mean, there's way more feuds, way more things open. So I think, you know, that's really what what they should do. And that that's hopefully going to be the main event next week. We just got to wait and see.
Exactly. So like we'll see what happens. Britt Baker also got a promo. He'll have a chance. We're gonna see also Britt Baker going against a Mercedes Martin. And uh, not Britt Baker. We're gonna see J Jamie Hayter going against Mercedes Martinez on Rampage. So this is gonna set up something again for like the match of Dynamite next week. So this is gonna be good. And like you said, if Thunder Rosa doesn't win, then completely drop the ball on that. So I'm feeling that she's gonna become the new AEW World uh, Women's Champion. So it's fine. I liked it. Now let's go Paul to like the main event because in the main event Sammy Guevara was defending against Scorpio Sky for the TNT Championship and he missed uh, one spot he went for like a 450 splash on the table that of course like some uh, you know tension Tay Conti was added into the storyline which I didn't care for as much because again you know I mean we know they're a couple nobody cares I mean besides them you know that's their personal life I don't really have anything bad or any, or anything good to say but you see you know Sammy Guevara like uh, the match was okay I mean, the addition of Paige Van Sant, that was a little better. So what did you think? Yeah, I mean, the man, I, both guys are great. The one thing about Sammy is somebody made the comparison like he's kind of like the Dynamite Kid with all the risks he takes. And we saw how the Dynamite Kid ended up, you know. So maybe Sammy should slow down on all these, you know, 450 splashes through tables and crazy dives to the outside. You know, be a little more safe. Think about, you know, future a little bit. But, you know, him and uh, Scorpio Sky, they put on a good match. Obviously, lots of of commotion you know lots of going on interaction you know with sammy was too focused on ty or, or k instead of focusing on scorpio sky you know he hit his big finish you know one two three and scorpio sky is the new champion and i mean it's a swerve i didn't see coming i'm fine with it I, and they played hot potato with this belt i wouldn't even be surprised if sam is a three-time champ you know what i mean yes. they could go back to him in a couple weeks Paige van zandt she officially signed the contract you know, they knocked out Ty Conti. She signed it on her ass. And that's pretty much the closing here. And, you know, this is, you know, it, it wasn't a bad ending. Uh, maybe I want to put it in the main event, but I guess it was a big beat down and everything. That's kind of how you wanted to go off the air. I absolutely agree. So that that was really cool. Like you said, the addition of Ty or Tay, I, I don't know if I like this, but like this Miro has to come back. I'd rather see that. Or we're going to see Warlow and Scorpio Sky for the TNT Championship. I'm thinking MJF is going to come back and going to like, you know, cause the match to Warlow and then they're going to set up the feud between the two. So Scorpio Sky is going to have maybe a few months uh, the run and then maybe Miro can come back. That would be a lot better for me. But like you said, Paul, a great AEW Dynamite. See, we're excited, we're happy, you know, nothing allowed to criticize. So, family, thank you so very much for being with us. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and also like keep adding us in every single thing, every social media outlet that we have that they are where. And that is Rope Break on Facebook, the OG Rope Break on Twitter, original Rope Break on Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok, and of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the original Rope Break. And you and me have one more thing that is left to say, and that is. Ah, uh, 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 uh.